Okay, we are live. Welcome, welcome. Oop. Be, help, be helpful if I on def into the Discord. Uh, hey, what's going on? We are live, live. Yeah. Uh, by oh, the way, in case yeah. you wanted to watch, it's that same shape, Maddox on Twitch. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, hey, Herschel, what's going on? How you doing? Um, well, here we are. Here we are, ready to go with our last Ahsoka episode. Excited. Yeah, and then uh, Loki starts tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> which, yeah, I should be able to watch at least. And and we are swapping. We've been trying this new thing where we alternate every other uh, for who writes the who writes the notes. Um, so Mike will hopefully be able to do that one as well. Well, yeah, you'll know I'll be watching that one <laughs> oh, yeah. right away. Nice. When it's available, I should say. Oh, we're doing, now. I'm doing good, Herschel. I think can't speak for everyone else, but yeah, Let me make sure I got this video right here. Okay. I suppose everything looked right. I got that right. I mean, I did literally just copy and pasted what you told me, Tyler, but <laughs> in the show notes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, of course, I could bring up our former uh, teammate involvement in. <laughs> yeah, America's Top, Next Top Podcaster. Yep. Actually, I might turn you up just a little bit more again. I can push myself a little bit. Okay. Check one, two. Is that uh, pretty good? I think it's pretty good. I mean, I can make it more good. Let me see this one. I've got a ceiling fan going, and I think I can hear that in my headphones. Okay, that's decent, I think, where, where you have it now. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into it with the podcast proper. Uh, counting it down as per the usual in three, two, one. Hello and welcome back to Disney Nerds Plus, where we talk about your favorite nerdy shows on Disney Plus. This is episode 49 for Wednesday, October 4th. Just double checking that's correct. 2023. Today we're talking about Ahsoka number eight, the final episode, The Jedi, The Witch, and The Warlord. Talk more about how I feel about that title later. I'm Shane. And I'm Mike. Hey, Mike. And For the first time in a while, we do have a special guest. It is Tyler from the Discographers Podcast, as well as my former teammate on America's Next Top Podcaster. Tyler, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I think that uh, special might be debatable. In this special <laughs> guest, but, oh, of course uh, yeah, it is. Good. Excited to talk about Ahsoka. We had to date probably, well, in my humble opinion, one of the best episodes on the entirety of Next Top Podcaster. Via I think a, so too. <laughs> via a giant space arena with a uh, political debate of sorts, from what I recall. Yeah. Yeah, it was a fun one to put together, and uh, I'm really proud of it. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, go check that out, season two, uh, sometime. <laughs> Earlier episode, because, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, well, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil a two season old. Uh, yeah, <laughs> show uh, how many point. years ago was that? <laughs> yeah, it's been. It was pre pandemic, so it's been a bit. But uh, yeah, glad to have you on here. Uh, so you are you a pretty big? You're a pretty big Star Wars fan, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Star Wars was a big deal to me growing up. Um, we, uh, I went, my mom would take uh, me and my siblings to the library and I would always zip over to where I knew the Star Wars books were and uh, I would just read whatever, you know, check out whatever I could find and 
uh, that's I found out the hard way that sometimes the books were a series that you had to you you should have re- read in a certain order, and I just grabbed whatever, and gotcha. uh, I was like, oh, okay, I think this happens after this or before this other one, and um, but yeah, I've read all those old uh, extended universe uh, novels. I've probably read most of them. That's awesome. Nice. So, so including the Thrawn ones then? Oh yeah, definitely the Thrawn ones. Um, the new ones and the old ones. Um, I was actually thinking I might want to go back and re, you know, read uh, *Heir to the Empire* and the the other two, um, you know, in modern times because it's been a few decades since I've since I've touched on those. Right. Yeah. Well, they hold. How do you feel that it holds up to? I, I I don't know canonically like what they kept or chain, you know change i mean just going off of my memories um i mean i feel like the character of thrawn has has been very stable like um you know a timeline is all over the place now because um i mean actually now we're kind of close to what what they're doing in the books with with the ahsoka show Hmm. so i don't know maybe maybe it'll line back up yeah yeah gotcha gotcha cool awesome well i suppose uh i didn't ask mike you doing okay (laughs) Oh uh, yeah, I'm great. Good. <laughs> Sorry, just, I messed up the whole rhythm of the, of the show. Just, just reading on some stuff. Just good. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, let's uh, let's quick get into uh, brief. Keep it as brief as possible. Sometimes I t- over talk too much about this particular thing. Previously on Ahsoka. Uh, yeah. Evan the in the show notes. Uh, Hera goes to court. Uh, <laughs> if you can call it that, it's kind of a courtroom i suppose uh she had uh with a surprise c-3po showing up there in the court which uh love him or hate him he was there uh and the uh i don't think that was i don't think it was anthony daniels in that suit because it oh, had no. a fat fat neck <laughs> <laughs> i was like huh fat neck you look at old pictures and you look at new pictures three peels neck gained a little bit of girth yeah anthony daniels is pretty Thin dude, I suppose it'd be yeah. maybe hard to uh, find the exact uh, size person, but yeah, I think it. I think he's doing just voice only at this point. Um, I think you got to yeah, pay him a right. lot now to get him in the gold suit. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I think he was done with it in uh, A New Hope, probably. <laughs> Did not seem pleasant, but uh, so we had the uh, the Purgle uh, showing up there on Peridia. Am I saying that right? Uh, Tyler, do you know? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> I mean, it's, I think that's what they say in the show. Yeah, that's I mean, I've heard Peridia and yeah, uh, maybe Peridia. <laughs> Peridia. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So they had that mind like field. People call Pergil and they call Pergil. I'm like, what the? Hell? That's Pergil? that's what the whole called? gif gif thing all over again. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> uh. So. Yeah, they they ran into the, that unfortunate minefield there uh, outside of Perdia, and then ended up going into the the ring or the debris field. I guess I guess like it's a combination ring and uh, and graveyard of sorts. But I still question how how those things are decaying in space. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, they're already defying all <laughs> all odds by. Being this both, is a, this is from a galaxy far, 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 far away. <laughs> yes, by I guess being organisms that can be in space first of all, and 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 uh, going light speed, you know, all those things. Uh, it's Star Wars, you know. They're already <laughs> playing with the laws of physics, but um, yeah. So then we had uh, the intel brought to Thrawn by Morgan. We had uh, uh, Ahsoka and Huyang. Yeah, going through that debris and uh, trying to detect Sabine and then the Great Mothers um, detecting where she was there and then Thrawn still, uh, yeah, seemingly just kind of um, kind of letting them go often, it seemed like, letting people go, but that's all part of his grand strategy, I guess. And then Sabine and Ezra were traveling with the Noti, which I st- I tell you, I, I gotta say, I still kind of think the the my new 
cutest Star Wars uh, <laughs> species. I, I think I think they're up there, uh, along <laughs> with the uh, what are they as as uh, what the heck is the Boba Boba Frick species called again? Oh, the little guy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. As I wanted to say, like as Mongols or something, but <laughs> it's a. Uh, Oh, uh, as Bo, no, not Boba Frick, Babu, Babu, Frick. Babu, Boba Frick. <laughs> <laughs> he is a uh, Anzelin or, hey. or Anzelin, Anzelin, I think. Um, yeah, they're up there too, but uh, yeah, I think these are my new, <laughs> my new favorite cute Star Wars species. Yeah, so then we had uh, Sabine, let's see, what else do we have? They were attacked by Shin and uh, the, was it like, were they basically like the Red Guard? Or what, no, were they the Nomads? They were just, mm, yeah. yeah, they were just out in, in the, that planet's yeah. bare, wasteland or whatever, they Badlands. Teamed up <laughs> with them at that point. Yep. Um, and Balin just kind of was like, you go. <laughs> and just stood behind, but then he had to fight Ahsoka anyway, after all that. And uh, Ezra was just kind of like being cocky, not needing uh, Sabine's lightsaber, nor a blaster. And he, he proved her, <laughs> he proved, uh, hey. proved his worth with just using the Force. Uh, he said the Force is his guide. So. He did well. And then uh, Huyang ended up uh, kind of saving the day and initially looking like he uh, <laughs> had, had taken out Balin altogether, but not quite. Uh, but at least gave Ahsoka enough time to get out of there. And then uh, she saved the day as well with uh, in the little uh, noty, you know, circle <laughs> there took out uh the remainder of those yeah i guess nomads but then then um yeah shin after all that shin ended up they gave her a chance to kind of join him and she, she respectfully declined so then uh this episode this year the last episode uh I noticed somewhere I read it as being the uh, a mini series. It was described that way. So, does that? I, I don't actually know if they had any plans for additional seasons or not. I think. Well, my thoughts now are that this was just kind of setting up ultimately for the Dave Filoni movie. <sighs> I don't know. I I feel like there's there's going to be more shows before a movie comes. There might be more shows, but in th this one in particular, um, I don't know if they're doing an, a season two or not. Um, I don't know if they've oh. heard anything about a season two. Yeah. Well, and that's yeah, that's what got me well, wondering was the was the phrase miniseries on wherever it was IMDb or something. Probably one of those things that's up in the air to see how it goes, and then they'll they'll make a decision after. Right. Yeah, unless like, can you use mini series for like an eight episode season anyway? Like, <laughs> I think I think they can do whatever the hell they want. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> that's very true, they and they like... do because we're Disney and we own right. everyone. <laughs> Who's yeah. gonna tell them no? True. Yeah, exactly. Shane is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I walk up to Bob Iger and be like, "No, you can't call it a mini series. Damn, it. just just figure it out." He's got a dictionary. What do you mean, series? Bob He's Iger? Or isn't it isn't it the mouse that runs everything? Ha <laughs> ha. Um, so initially, I wanted to call this. A, I didn't know what to call the building, like a temple. I want to, and then, but then later on, this is another thing where they Thrawn himself calls it a fortress. So I'm like, fortress is perfect. I'm going to go with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that works. Uh, so Morgan was telling Thrawn that the the transfer was complete. Um, that we kind of know, like we, 
we basically know. We don't really know. <laughs> we don't know. I'm I I think they're night sisters or night the night sisters and night brothers, maybe dead or alive. I don't know. Right. I think it's that. They, they talk about that they're transferring from the catacombs, and mm-hmm. the only thing I can think of that would normally go into catacomb is dead bodies. So right. I think it's some kind of night sister, night brother bodies. Now. He, now remember in the animation, uh, both Clone Wars, no, just Clone Wars, that they were Mother Townsend was Townsend was able to bring back like dead Night Sisters, too. Mm-hmm. So, right, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So then uh, Thrawn was uh, also told uh, Enoch to bring the uh, the Eye of Scion down, which really immediately proved exactly what uh, the speculation I saw online was that these things were going to connect. Uh, and boy, do they. It reminds me of the uh, when they saw it in the... Um, uh, the Re- uh, Attack of the Clones? Or? Yeah, that one. Oh. Yeah. Or you see Obi Wan, but the, he has to get the ring to just go in hyperdrive. Yep, just a but, much bigger version, <laughs> way bigger one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he also told Enoch to dispatch to Ties, uh, in case they uh, ran into uh, what was it, ah- Ahsoka? No, the shuttle, the uh, uh, Ahsoka shuttle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, then Thrawn kind of a surprise to say that he he admitted that he even fell had fallen victim to the heroics of Jedi in the past. Um so I guess he's kind of could admit his own failures, but learns from them. And then went on to talk about the uh, the alliance with the Great Mothers being beneficial. Um and then the great mothers thank and also reward Morgan by performing a some sort of ritual with her face. <laughs> um, it would have been kind of nice to know. It would have been kind of nice to know, like what that really does—the glowing face thing. Like, yeah, it it seemed like she fought. You know, she was just as good of a fighter as before when we saw her in Mando. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, yeah. all those questions they're asking prior to, and I had to go and I had to check out a Clone Wars episode this afternoon just to see. But everything they say in there, like asking her all about like giving up her life for another the sacrifice, they say that literally word by word in one of the Clone Wars episodes too. <laughs> like, nice. Wow, they are they are really making sure they they get this right. That's awesome. So, let's see. Um, There was one thing I wanted to point out, like her being a good fighter and everything. I found out that the actress that plays plays Morgan is the goddaughter of Bruce Lee. Did you know that? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yep. I recently Uh, found that out like Diana Diana Lee uh, in Asanto. Uh, I don't know if the Lee is like if that correlates at all but um yeah kind of a fun thing and her i think her father was was also a uh pretty famous martial artist but yeah so and we we do get to see that showcase in this episode pretty substantially once again Mm -hmm. but uh oh yeah and and yeah the last time was uh mando season two right when they when they last faced off but the first time we saw us, both of them, right? Yeah, true. In live action, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Morgan pledged herself to the to the sisterhood, the motherhood. What it what is it called? Yeah, it's like the sisterhood. It's like yeah. the night sisters. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, after they do the weird face thing that that adds the like blemishes to her face that the other sisters have. Although yeah, her. Thought for sure that like her skin was gonna also turn white at the same time, but <laughs> maybe she's not just... full. She's not full great mother. She's yeah, 
getting there. Oh, no She's like step one. She's still got uh, some more payments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's part of the uh, MLM. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Um, she's got to. She's got to get three other people up under her. Yeah. To, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe there's uh, something to do that. Maybe she needs to form her own trio of uh, of mothers. To, <laughs> um. Yeah. So then, uh, you do see the 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 green glowing in her eyes, and then, and then, uh, this green going around her face. Yeah. Right. Uh, Does it just transfer from that into this? like green tornado thing or I, i'm i'm trying to remember uh exactly green tornado thing oh no like they're done and then the the great, great mothers get in like a circle and start conjuring uh mother Talzin's blade or, or sword which was also in clone wars in a clone wars episode mm-hmm. so that's pretty cool too like, right. Wow. Yeah, and I didn't put that together until later. The blade of Talzin. Um, yeah, it's just her blade. Um, but it, they refer to it as a blade of Talzin, but it's not like, yeah, it was just her sword. <laughs> like I was, was her thinking, sword, yeah, thinking of it as like the blade of Talzin. I mean, that is what they call it, but it's not like a official well, I title. I don't. She's in in the timeline. She's dead now, so like that's right. why they call it the blade of Talzin. It was didn't, hers, but now it's. Didn't they suggest yeah. that? Because didn't she also like fly away in a green mist when, when she, died? Wasn't that the deal? Well, that was no, because there's I guess there's a comic, out there where she actually dies for for good. Like, oh, okay. After after what we've seen in Clone Wars, but it was Although, similar to. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Tyler. I was gonna say, although we could just have a somehow Talzin returned. Right. And yeah. Just move on. Yeah, she I mean, if if uh at least two different characters in Star in uh Star Wars shows now can live having a lightsaber pierced through their abdomen, uh why not? <laughs> <laughs> and there's these there's this like deep fake. I don't know if either of you've seen the deep fake uh I've seen that guy. Yeah, yeah those guys were got Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Anakin all just, oh, yeah. like, chilling on a couch. Uh, <laughs> like, exactly what I thought. Like, Qui-Gon's just like, what the hell? <laughs> when <laughs> when uh, Sabine survives. Um, yeah. And then, and then uh, what was it? Reva was the other one? Re- Reva, Reva. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, or no, it wasn't her. It was uh, the uh, Grand Inquisitor, right? Yeah. Um, because he, oh, yeah, he gets Reva's the one that takes him out, and then later he shows up again. Like what? <laughs> but, I, I uh, guess I guess he just didn't have enough uh, will to to, to kick. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Qui Gon just didn't have it in him. <laughs> I mean, it was such a long time ago that the the medical technology just wasn't there. Clearly, <laughs> yeah. but uh, it could be. So then we're taken back outside to the what I'm guessing are planes based more or less like a little bit hilly uh mountainous but i think they're pretty pretty much planes um yeah sure you see the uh, yeah pretty plain yeah uh we see the uh the shuttle ahsoka shuttle hovering uh above the the no t transports traveling along the terrain there um and uh, and then Ezra's up in the shuttle, uh, constructing a lightsaber, and Hu Yang is is uh, there, quote unquote, helping with his his expertise. Getting kind of frustrated. Well, they're kind of frustrating each other. Hu Yang like needs it by the book, and Ezra's just trying to get it done fast, right? So, uh, but he is. He gets it. He gets it done pretty pretty quickly. Which is like, uh, it's like the opposite of everything we've ever seen about lightsaber construction in the past. But <laughs> um, they go on to talk oh. about how this is his third lightsaber. So holy cow! Yeah, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, he goes on to talk about how Kanan taught him how to how to build it and. Uh, Apparently, Hu Yang actually taught Kanan or Caleb, as he was 
known, I guess, back at the uh, the Jedi, uh, not Jedi Academy, <laughs> Temple. Jedi Temple. Temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I was gonna say Temple, but something didn't sound. I was thinking all of a sudden. I'm thinking about all the Jedi temples like throughout uh, Rebels. Well, that's like the that's like the main Jedi temple. Yeah. So um, only had one Jedi temple, I thought, didn't they? Who did? I thought Rebels only had one Jedi temple that it ran into. I thought there was not multiple. I thought there was a bunch of temples that we ran into. Unless I'm thinking of like, I think it was old. I I feel like the only one that they went to for Jedi was Lethal's Jedi Temple, but it had different yeah. layers to it. I guess did go to a Sith Temple too. So yeah. Gotcha. I, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure. I could be confusing with the yeah. I don't. Know. Yeah. Just have just have Herschel hit the command. Mike's always right. I know. You're always <laughs> yeah, but you're admitting you might be wrong this time. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm 98 percent sh- like right, but there's two percent of me that says no. Yeah. It yeah it is. It, yeah. As everyone knows, for now and for always, Mike is absolutely right. Um, <laughs> So let's see. So then, yeah, Hu Yang actually had uh, an extra hilt to. Well, I, is that the right term here? Hilt to give him. I th- it, it's like it a, a part. Yeah, it's a yeah. part of the hilt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, cr- cross guard or whatever. Um, Blade emitter or something like that. Yeah, but he had an extra one because the other one he had was um, was Kanan's. I think he. Apparently supplied him that in the first place. He just happened and to have this extra. Well, Hugh Yang even said he was like, wait, going to hold it on this extra one for Kanan, but now it's yours, Ezra. It's your Kanan, this apprentice. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Ahsoka. Yeah, then they go, oh, because Ahsoka, or um, Sabine was, was chilling there for a moment, leaning up against the wall, and then... And then Ezra basically asked, um, it was kind of a dick move that he was just kind of like, did Ahsoka ever uh, teach you that? And then, <laughs> and then bam, she's gone. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of a, maybe not the best thing to ask her. Um, if, if she, if she taught her that, but she, um, I guess Ahsoka was afraid uh, that Sabine was training for the wrong reasons. And, yeah, the, the whole Mandalore situation. Uh, yeah, that's, a, I suppose, a pretty pretty uh, good observation. <laughs> that, that might that might cause some, uh, some anger there. But, yeah. <laughs> so, Sabine and Ahsoka end up talking... Um, outside the shuttle about her, that her little gamble seemed to pay off with basically not, uh, not destroying that map in the first place. And then, uh, Sabine ends up apologizing, but yeah, I mean, Ahsoka wasn't like, didn't end up being super mad after all that. Uh, maybe her, Ahsoka the White or whatever uh, did some Ahsoka the White did some uh, something for the better for her in terms of that she's she's probably a little more understanding now seems like but uh, Ahsoka also uh, then talked about how she had made some um, oh how Sabina made some difficult decisions um, and that Anakin always had stood by her no matter what over back when he was her master. So she was going to try to do the same now um, and be there be there for Sabine no matter what happens next. So um, <laughs> she asked if she'd been keeping up with her training and she was like, eh, kind of. <laughs> yeah, sure. Like she's trying. She's trying. Yeah, and um, that she did have better uh, lightsaber control. Um, but 
Ahsoka points out, it's it's not about the lightsaber. It's more about training your mind and your body and your trust in the Force overall that the lightsaber is not necessarily relevant, although I don't think it hurts <laughs> to <laughs> also master that if that's going to be your weapon. But um, yeah. yeah, for sure. So then Ezra steps out of the shuttle with his lightsaber just in time for the two ties to <laughs> make their attack. And um, pretty instantly their stabilizers go out, which I guess is what's keeping this thing afloat, so to speak, <laughs> in the air, hovering. Um, I think they're hovering, yeah. So then Ezra and Ahsoka both have to quickly use the force to keep this ship up in the air and uh so then um Sabine quickly runs to the back of the shuttle the the cockpit and has to um make some quick adjustments to a to a panel back there um Hu Yang points out uh that she's not going to have much much time and that she she says she she doesn't she's only going to need not going to need that much and uh just enough to get a short burst uh out um of the engines to uh <laughs> didn't really see this coming it just straight up rams the ties i mean they they seem pretty fragile anyway those ships are yeah i could see the sh- the, the jedi ship not being that much damage on the wings but i mean maybe some pretty bad scratches and burn yeah, at least not from taking those ties out. Definitely from crash landing immediately after yeah. that. <laughs> and isn't this like the third or fourth time that this shuttle has crashed <laughs> and in this show? And then have to be like, all right, Hu Yang, guess it's uh, up to you to fix it while we go do an adventure. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you get fixed in time to pick us up at the last second. Yeah. He's probably thinking, I get no respect. <laughs> uh, <again. laughs> uh yeah, just <laughs> it's just like the noti the noti uh kind of cheer briefly before the thing crashes too because yeah um, just kind of goes whoop. yeah so th- I mean thankfully I, 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 will, I will give the the whoever the the show the, whoever directed this episode props for because normally when you see a ship go down under the 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 ridge line out of frame and then it's like five seconds and then it swoops back up i was i was expecting that the whole time and it just oh it they actually legitimately crashed this <laughs> yeah time. okay this is yeah. a new thing i've never seen this before <laughs> <laughs> but no not to worry because sabine made it out of there unscathed i mean so did hu yang i suppose uh hu yang's just staring at the ship you can see him out there just like god i have to fix all this now damn it again um <laughs> Then we also Sabine comes back up. Uh, she's she's fine. Kind of like brushes the dust off, and uh, is kind of a little bit uh, eh, no big deal, you know. And then we see that <laughs> I think uh, Ahsoka is kind of like oh. <laughs> I think she she doesn't really <laughs> act like it, but you know, probably not too pleased that her ship's in. In rough, pretty rough shape at this point. But we also see that the Noti... Is was a Hugh Yang ship? Because I feel like that ship was the same ship in Clone Wars. And if that's the case, because he has his workshop, that, I think that's Hugh Yang's ship. Sure, <laughs> yeah. And to it, be I, fair. I guess, I, I, guess uh, I don't know how that works in the Star Wars. So basically, Ahsoka just commandeered the ship. He's like, all right, droid, well, you've had this for a thousand years. Maybe that's why she's not too pissed off about it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Sure, why not? Maybe dro- droids can have uh, ownership here. I don't... Hu Yang gets no respect. <laughs> Just finished paying off that ship, and then Ahsoka shows up and crashes <laughs> in every other episode. Yeah. Uh, we, we do also see that the Noti, uh, their transports are also in pretty rough shape. <laughs> they don't seem too thrilled about that as well. It doesn't look like any of the Noti died, though, so hey, that's good. They don't. They're not killing off little, little turtles. Yeah, <laughs> turtle folk. Yeah, no, that's that's good. Good to see that. Um, mm-hmm. So, meanwhile, back at the fortress of Thrawn, I guess uh, Enoch informs yeah. him of uh, 
of a successful strike uh, that apparently just before they lost contact and Thrawn is not, uh, he doesn't skip a beat. He just says, consider him lost and mark their captain for a citation, which is <laughs> was funny. Like, wow, this guy is, uh, yeah. No, <laughs> yep, he takes no shit, but uh, he says, uh, also says to prepare for a ground assault, a ground assault immediately. And back on, yeah, he's waiting, for, he, he knows they're on their way just because the time's running out. Yep, and then back on the planes, uh, Ahsoka Spine and Ezra. Right off on those howlers, uh, which are also kind of they're kind of cool too in their own right. Um, you really expect when we first see the like three wolf knight, uh, uh, when we first are introduced to the planet, I thought for sure they were going to be like devastating wolves that you know tear you to shreds. Well, but no, are, I mean, they are kind of some kind of wolf. I mean, stay baloney, he can be yeah. his thing with wolves, so <laughs> he'll put in there. I mean. His character's name is Trapper Wolf. It's like this, like man, he really likes wolves. Fair no, enough. No dissing on that, but man, it's, it's just that these ones are like cute little puppy dogs, basically <laughs> that you can ride around. I on. <laughs> don't know if they're cute little puppy dogs. Those faces kind of don't look that cute. Oh well, okay. <laughs> the the naughty seems pretty scared of him. Of the, yeah, he showed up with one. That's true. Uh, it's just. Yeah, it was just a, a fun moment with her uh, getting mad at the uh, the howler, yeah, <laughs> basically whimpering great. off. Um, but uh, yeah, so they ride off, and Huyang gives the uh, the classic "May the Force be with you." And then once again, back at the fortress, Morgan is uh, uh talks about how the uh, the there's these there's these their volunteers, which I thought was kind of weird, like they're taking volunteer uh night troopers i guess but uh that morgan uh blessed them or whatever and um said told thron that they're prepared to make the sacrifice for him and thron kind of cor- corrects her that it's it's for the empire and uh, the security of the galaxy but uh yeah so then the the three uh, the uh, the same uh, Ahsoka Sabine and Ezra arrive at the fortress um contacting Huyang and the Noti who are back there repairing the Noti are and very much involved with the repair of the shuttle and uh they kind of are they look like they're just tearing shit up <laughs> <laughs> The I mean, one gets like shocking himself with the, the wires. Like, it seemed like they must be like, go away from me. <laughs> I may not make. <laughs> oh yeah. That's right. Um, I mean, they seem like they'd be pretty skilled engineers with those transport homes, those mobile homes they have. <laughs> I know one little one holding the wires getting shocked. And that's when Huang just says, don't wait for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Thrawn, um, oh yeah, this is where uh, I think Ezra talks about how Thrawn found this place, uh, woke up the witches, and rebuilt the starship. Um, yeah, he's a pretty, uh, pretty capable guy there. Yeah, um, that would have been really cool to see on screen. Yeah. Right? Yeah, some sort of backstory with that. Just We just see the aftermath. But, uh, yeah, so then they say, um, oh, because of that, I think it's Ezra saying uh, it wasn't safe to, uh, oh, I think he was telling telling them that it wasn't, I guess he was talking about himself, that it wasn't safe to come alone, um, and that uh, Ahsoka, I think it was Ahsoka, says it's not, he's not alone anymore, and uh, let's try the front door. So... <laughs> That's their uh, that's their strategy. Maybe not as strategic as door. Thrawn, but <laughs> uh, just go right through the front. Um, so Thrawn pretty quickly says uh, orders to uh, rain down hellfire from the the Chimera, 
and that they're not negotiating, uh, not going to negotiate with the apprentice of Anakin. Like, okay, I'm trying to like make make Ahsoka sound more more evil for that reason or something. Well, I mean, there's also Thrawn does know about Anakin. There's a book out there that I haven't read yet, but I kind of want to know. Thrawn and Darth Vader book. But they also look at the like Clone War timeline when they met. Yeah, that's so he, one of the newer newer Thrawn books. Um, yep. It's like during the Clone Wars they meet, and then I think there's another one where they have a scene together as Darth Vader and Thrawn. Mm-hmm. So, uh, is that suggesting like is Thrawn like is he kind of like a denier? Is he kind of you know that's suggesting that Darth was. Is he suggesting Darth was bad or that he was a failure or something here that if he knows Anakin was Darth Vader ultimately, but he was with the Empire, you know what I mean? Like, what is he suggesting about Ahsoka's affiliation? Like, that that's... I I just assumed it was more of he, that Ahsoka, it would be, from Thrawn's perspective, perspective, Ahsoka would be a very capable fighter, uh, you know, physically, and probably a competent uh, in terms of strategy. And so I was like, yeah, yeah, so you, to, well, let's just rain down hellfire on her. There's no negotiating. Don't give her a chance. Sure, makes sense. So uh, yeah, then Ezra, um, Ezra is using the Force to open the gate, and then uh, Sabine and Ahsoka do as well they're kind of like all helping each other with the force here and uh yeah they get through they get through that door thrawn's not too happy about it either but we maybe and now we start seeing sabine maybe using some force power yeah uh she's definitely helping at this point um but yeah we haven't seen her he's still up until this point hasn't hasn't single-handedly uh, used the Force to pick anything up yet. Not yet. And at this point, they uh, have they finished loading up whatever they're loading up from the catacombs, or are they still loading? Because no, I, the, I, they, they, I think they were done at this time. They're getting, yeah, they're so, basically getting the ring on and going to get ready to launch. Which I don't know. I was kind of questioning, like, why couldn't they get the ring on like a hundred feet up, are they, from wherever they were? Right. If you know a ground attack is coming, why not just get off the ground? Yeah. Um... Or why didn't they just, why didn't they just connect the the ring prior to? Yeah. Like you know the they were being done for three days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a very time consuming process. Uh, <laughs> no idea. Um, yeah. Well, maybe just maybe a precaution, just to make sure that the no one messed with the the ring that you know. So. What happened was that in the time that Thrawn has been trapped there, the stormtroopers formed a union, and, um, <laughs> and so they need to do one job at a time, and they need to, they need their union breaks, and that's that was the downfall of the Empire. That checks out. Yeah, not only do they and they they also uh, argued to install guardrails. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, that was a. Uh... Uh, they they make that joke in one of the Family Guy uh, Star Wars, yeah, I think, yeah. right? uh, <laughs> the Death Star, right? Um, so uh, yeah, the uh, he, he also Thrawn goes ahead and uh, dispatches the night troopers then, uh, and then as well as informing the great mothers that it's time. So yeah, pretty quickly, pretty much immediately, we see the the trio of uh, Ahsoka, Sabine, and Ezra uh, deflecting some uh, laser fire from those night troopers, and um, Ahsoka is telling uh, telling them to fall back and draw them out. Tells she goes ahead and tells Sabine to switch to blasters, uh, which um, I guess that gives them more weapon options overall. <laughs> but uh, cause cause uh, she 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 goes ahead and does that, and we see some uh, some cool lightsaber maneuvers from Ahsoka, and some uh, some more cool force 
moves from Ezra. I think he's still got his lightsaber here as well. But then this is where we get the <laughs> the funness. After once they're once they're done taking out, uh, per, perceivably taking out these night troopers. Um, see the great mothers perform a chant of sorts and go ahead and resurrect those night troopers into what and I yet, and and that that chant was also in Clone Wars as well. Nice. Into what I'm describing as zombie troopers because <laughs> in the uh it was in not canon but there was something about zombie troopers. I yeah. Wanted, like book or comic I can I I just heard I think I heard it from a on one of the other YouTube channels I watch. Uh, I'm going to push up my uh, glasses. <laughs> well, uh, my non-existent glasses. Uh, yes, there were two uh, Death Trooper books. One that death takes, one Han Solo shows up, and it's Han and Chewie uh, fighting <laughs> zombie zombie stormtroopers before uh, yeah. Episode Four, and then they did like a, it's like a, a one in the past. Um, it was like old Old Republic. Oh, nice. Like before episode hmm. one, I think before Episode One. Gotcha. Interesting. Okay. Was that like a was that like a what if thing though? Like a like a Marvel what if like kind of No, thing? I think it was like a Empire decided messed around with uh uh something and oops, we turned people people into zombies, including all of our stormtroopers at this prison. Nice. <laughs> well they very much are acting like zombies initially. Like they got the, the movement down and everything. Uh just like um uh the green the, eyes through the through the helmets. That's like whoa. That's, that's cool. Crazy. That was a cool effect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, like zombies, but with full armor. <laughs> it's a little scary. Uh, but yeah, but they can't. Re- but they can't really like eat you through those. So yeah, they can't eat your brains uh, through the helmet. So maybe it's fine. <laughs> because they have weapons. That's the difference. <laughs> um. So they make their way up the stairs and are able to seal themselves behind a door. Um, I guess I guess they just used a was it a lightsaber or a blaster? I guess they used a lightsaber to just on the oh, on the door slash, panel. Yeah, the slash the door. Yeah. Make it close. Yep. And then after all that, uh, Ezra Ezra says, "Nice moves, Ahsoka. She's been training, Sabine." Was your excuse? And then Ezra, I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, classic, classic, sarcastic Sabine. But uh, they keep on going up the stairs, and we see the eye, the eye of Sion, kind of clamp on to the Chimera. Basically, it's got little little clamps on the sides. Secure that. Chimera in there, and Thrawn goes on to say that they're advancing quickly, which could prove problematic if they, basically, if they are able to come aboard the, uh, I guess the ship. I was a little bit confused here. There, yeah, the ship, but not the... they're getting on the Chimera, Chimera, chimera mm-hmm. not the Ring of Cyan, no. because Ring of Cyan has a its own bridge. Right. Right. So, uh, she, uh, yeah, um, Morgan goes on to say that she understands, uh, and then Thrawn says for the Empire, and then she waits for him, and I think the the great mother's, uh, to, to walk ahead before she whispers, for death, I'm here. It's a little, I thought it was a little defiant. <laughs> Something's going to happen at da- death, I'm here eventually. It's going to be great to see. Mm. Yes. Uh, I'm liking this whole night sister twist in there in this. Yeah, yeah. This is cool to see uh, live action now. Um. So the night troopers break through the first through the door. Uh, but then pretty quickly they they seal off the second door. Uh, so the troopers are probably like, oh man. And I shouldn't just say break through. They like explode the door. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're right off the bat. Of course, there's another door they got to get through now. This is usually what the good guys have to deal with. But <laughs> um, 
Then we get to Soka. Well, the three of them uh, are able to they've run into Morgan, and Ahsoka's like, I got this. <laughs> uh, tells uh, Sabine and Ezra to go off after Thrawn. And uh, now round two between Ahsoka and Morgan Elsbeth once again. And uh, so they uh, so they do. Well, she's got a new cool blade too. Remember, she got the blade tells you know. Oh yeah, I remember. Um, you yeah. Remember, cool green glowy <laughs> blade. Yep. Yeah, it makes a really crazy sound when the blade starts lighting up green. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So before, yeah, before the good point, uh, before they start fighting, we see uh, Morgan with making some kind of cool moves there and like. A, I wouldn't have guessed, but yeah, she just like kind of like glides her hand down the blade, which I would have thought that would that would hurt. <laughs> I don't know the green glowiness. Uh, Maybe it's... that's what the eye thing was was for. It's like okay, here we're gonna touch your forehead, and that makes you immune to the to the blade of Talzin. Yeah. yeah, you know what kind of reminded me. Now that I think about it, it's almost like a um, like a World of Warcraft. Uh, what's his face, Illidan, like green glowy glowiness on the blades or something, but uh it's cool. It's a cool new thing. Um it's very different like I, I have questions about <laughs> about how how the green glowiness uh of, of the of the witches, you know, how that fits into the the force and everything. Uh but I'm sure I'm sure Filoni has all, all the answers about this. Uh and maybe we'll even I, learn I more about does. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a new, it's a whole new thing to the, to the live action world of Star Wars, but, uh, looking forward to seeing more on that. So, uh, yeah, they, uh, then, uh, Ezra and Sabine end up, let's see, wait a minute. Oh, I guess does Ezra impale one of the, uh, night troopers here. Um, no, they were on the top. Yeah, they get to the top. I guess it, he must impale this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He impales. It's two the the two like gr- dark gray troopers, um, right? Dark, dark troopers. That dark trooper. Death troopers. Is that what they are? Death it's troopers. The Rogue yeah. One. Rogue One. Yeah. Ah, uh, right. Which right. we hadn't seen before in Thrawn's armies. So I'm wondering if maybe since the Night Sisters uh, raised all the dead, those guys had been killed in a previous battle or something. Sure. Sure. But. So yeah, I should say Ezra, tri- he thinks he's, he impales him with his lightsaber, but it doesn't do anything here. And then Sabine starts fighting the other. And then back on the chimera, uh, Thrawn and the great mothers enter the bridge of the ship. And or actually, I think they're on the, Eye of Cyan at this on that the eye. Bridge, yeah. It's a little bit confusing. Two ships in one, but two separate bridges. But uh, yeah, fair enough. Um, did they did they suggest you can get from one to the other, or <laughs> is it? I mean, they did. I don't Maybe think they showed Thrawn getting into a shuttle or doing anything, but I don't know how those just clamping onto the side. Uh, maybe yeah. there's a rope ladder or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. That... <laughs> maybe, maybe the the great mothers just portal them up there with their green flame magic. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't have uh, tra- transport uh, Star Trek tech here, so. Um, yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> um, yeah. So then uh, you see uh, the the droid in the in the ship there or in the. And the eye says, uh, our course is locked in. And then Thrawn says, take us out. Take us out. Which I thought, is it like, was it? I thought for sure this was going to be the start of the Great Mothers being like, what Morgan's back there? <laughs> but uh, they seem unfazed by that at this point. I would have thought Morgan would have been more pissed. But she but she did, um, when she said she understood earlier, like I think maybe she knew what was going to happen at this point. Um. Then back at 
the fortress. Morgan and Ahsoka keep keep on that fighting and um just just yep, just going at it. But uh then we see Sabine. Um <laughs> she shoots up this guy's helmet pretty good. Uh the the dude she's fighting and uh he He did. <laughs> Yeah, He's it, like Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was a little eerie what was going on there, but uh, yeah, it's like it almost feels like an eye. Now that I think about it, it's almost like an eye for an eye here because he, she shoots up his helmet and then, and then he takes off her helmet <laughs> immediately and then lifts her up against um, one of the uh, this this is almost like another hinge, right? Like a uh. I don't know what to call that pillar thing, <laughs> but lifts her up against it, and yeah. Ezra uh, Ezra gets thrown around a bit. Um, but yes, it is in that moment that we finally see Sabine able to use the Force to wield her lightsaber, and. Uh, that's <laughs> kind of a cool thing. I've never quite, I don't know if I've ever seen in any Star Wars ever a lightsaber used so, turned so quickly on and off. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah like, right to the head and now it. Tyler, the way you made it, you just did like a like, pen gesture. <laughs> just like a, yeah, double click on the pen and that was it. Straight through the side of the helmet of, uh, of this. Yeah, that, that made trooper. me think of like, okay, so every second that we have a lightsaber on screen, that costs us twelve dollars. So <laughs> if we can just go with that one, and you will spend the rest of the money on the other lightsaber, on the three, <laughs> four other lightsabers we have going this episode. Kind of reminds Makes me sense. of the end of. Uh, did you watch She Hulk by chance, Tyler? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like the last episode where the, where the but but it's all tongue in cheek with the uh, yeah, uh, transforming off screen or whatever, like the. Uh, I don't want to spoil, spoil too much if you haven't seen it, but the um, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, the uh, um, they, crap, they poke fun at themselves. Yeah. Oh, oh, the Kev, Kevin. Let's just say Kevin uh, tells her to do that. But um, so yeah, then uh, yeah, she took that out. So I guess they're they're dead, but uh, but I guess they can, or they're undead, but they can well, still I think die. If you hit. Kill if you do something to the brain. I think that's what's it. It's always the <laughs> we'll that's, do it. that's a zombie uh, 101, right? Standard there. standard zombie yep. rules. <laughs> yep. yep, makes sense. Um, so then she starts firing at the other one, and um, yeah, Ezra is able to also use the force to get his lightsaber back. And uh, <laughs> this was absolutely an off screen decapitation, uh, <laughs> it was right behind one of those pillar deals. Uh, but we do see the head uh, go flying in a very Django uh, fat sort of way. <laughs> um, but there's no, uh, yeah, in this case, no shadow of a head bouncing off, I don't think, that whole deal. Uh, I think we get to, we kind of see the bottom. And there's yeah, the, in that case, we em- see the, uh, embers. Yeah, the uh, singed uh, bottom part of that, <laughs> the neck area, yep. I guess. Um, it was a clean cut. Yeah. So right around there, we hear the uh, the alarm go off, and I sh- so I, I said something earlier about this. There's a name for that alarm. I didn't realize Klaxon alarm. Yeah. We hear it in every, like every Star Wars ever, but that. Rrr, rrr. Is that the is that the person that made the sound? Basically, <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the guy that made the sound. Wow. It's like that, what is it, that Wilhelm? Wilhelm the Wilhelm scream. scream. Yeah. Ah, yeah, it's in every, every just about every That's Star some, Wars. Or, that was some uh, kind of sound person that probably made up that. Oh, no, that, so the Wilhelm scream was uh, was actually from an old cowboy, I want to say, oh. cow, cowboy uh, yeah, that Native American right. movie. <laughs> but uh, it was from, I forget what the name of it was, but. Yeah, it was just in that old movie, and they just kept on using it. Um, but uh, yeah, so the so the alarm blares here, and the I don't know why. How did I miss that before? What was the part? Of, 
Oh, right, right. Because um, earlier when she was uh, presented the Blade of Talzin, um, she bowed, and then that was right when when the uh, Klexen alarm blared and the, the and the two ties were sent out. We see because we saw him come down and and exit. But uh, yeah, the night troopers uh, start coming, and uh, hey, uh, Ezra and. And Sabine appear seem seemingly are too late. Like they can't just jump across onto the. Was it again? Is this this is the, which which ship is this? Is this is this the Chimera? Chimera. This Chimera. Yeah. Chimera. This is, this is the Chimera and not the not the Eye. Okay. Uh, it's around the Chimera. The Eye of Sion is around the Chimera. Yeah. So um, well, yeah. No, I mean. I I I get what it looks like. I just uh, it's hard to see when you have a close up. What part of the which part of this are we actually looking at here? But um, so uh, Ahsoka, uh, she's uh, yeah, she needs to deflect. Is it? Is it? Wait a minute. Who is she deflecting fire from here? Oh, Ahsoka. Ahsoka needs to deflect the fire. Sorry, of uh, of the of the night troopers that uh came up to her and uh, Morgan fighting. Um, there's a little bit of back and forth here. They're not too far from each other, but but it's jumping back and forth between the two. And uh, Sabine seems to convince uh, Ezra that, uh, yeah, no, we can we can make this jump if, uh, if, I, if I push you, which we do see this in something previously. Yeah? No? I've seen this in Rebels. Yeah. Yeah, Rebels, Kanan and Ezra would do this to each other a couple yeah, times. Yeah, exactly. Thought it seemed familiar. Um so uh yeah, they uh go ahead and they go for it. Seems pretty far, but uh he uh he makes that jump and then she gives that force and it uh, this is the part you were describing earlier, Tyler, where it looked like the uh the shuttle was gonna <laughs> was maybe going to come back up. Uh, that's basically what happens here. Uh, <laughs> Ezra looks yeah. like he's not going to make it. Oh, oh, and then, of course, he is able he's to. He's here. He made it. Just grasp on the edge. Um, and, uh, yeah, he climbs up and throws down one of the night troopers. I had to, like, Rewind this part a few times because yeah, he ta- he only takes out one and then and then Sabine I guess blasts the other from a distance, thankfully because apparently was he was about to take Ezra out there, um, and this time it's her turn, uh, so she she backs up and then just as she's turning back she sees uh, Soka's in trouble, but uh, Ezra's kind of shouting down that there's no time. She's got to do it now. And seemingly looked looked like she was going to go for it. She was still going to try to make the jump. Um, but uh, so those night troopers keep getting taken out by, um, yeah, I guess it's, it's only Ahsoka here, yeah, at this point. Uh, she's somehow taking all these night troopers out and still meaning, still somehow fighting Morgan. Um mm-hmm. But uh, she manages to, uh, Morgan manages to slice through one of her sabers, unfortunately. That's not great. Nope, nope, down one weapon. And the troopers have noticed at this point, for whatever reason, they surround the two and they're not shooting. (laughs) I think they figure she's going to take care of the rest. So they just kind of like make sure she doesn't try to leave or if she kills her then they'll just take her out yeah i was kind of wondering if this was some kind of witch uh like you know honor fight to them or something like <laughs> uh maybe <laughs> or they're they finally hit their union union break yeah know? yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> and like uh yeah we're just gonna sit this one out um but so yeah, they just kind of wait there patiently, sort of in a circle around them, and and Morgan looks up at the, uh, the whole what am I calling it? Eye of Eye of Chimera, uh, departing 
Sure. <laughs> she says her, uh, oh, she says to Ahsoka here that her friends are dead and she'll also, she'll also die there alone. And that's when Sabine shows up. Not alone. She ignites her lightsaber. Uh, and this now she's like dual wielding with the lightsaber and the blaster simultaneously. Tearing shit up. And then uh, Ahsoka goes and knocks, uh, knocks Morgan down. And the, uh, the blade of towels in. Uh, she kind of pushes, pushes that blade into the floor. Does one last spin around and slices through the, uh, I guess the torso of Morgan. Um, that's when we start hearing, kind of start hearing that witch screaming a bit there. And, uh, and she did. Yeah, she didn't, she didn't, uh, live to tell the day unlike the last time. But, uh, then back on, well, I guess I put Chimera, but I guess this is maybe the, uh, like you said, the uh, the eye. Um, the great mothers are telling, they immediately are able to know that Morgan's dead. And then Thrawn says uh, she's done, she has done what was required. And this is the part I was thought, I thought for sure the, the great mothers are going to like take him over at this point. They're, they got to be pissed at this or something like thought, thought, yeah, absolutely. But no, no, because they care about getting the death in there. Is what they really what care about. Be, 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 be. <laughs> I mean, yeah, was it, I guess that was the goal the whole time. Um, uh, was it, <laughs> was it the goal the whole time? I, I think that was, I feel like that was a goal. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I assume that's what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause I mean, if they're loading up all those, caskets from their catacombs yeah. going back to the normal galaxy they yeah. have to go somewhere that's going to bring those things those dead corpses to life with a lot enough power sure and sure. dathomir makes the most sense sure yeah to a to a logical person uh i <laughs> i don't think about this stuff um but uh yeah, I guess you're not nerd enough. <laughs> My geek card or geek credit? Is yeah, yeah. So you can uh, you can hand that back in now. <laughs> I never admitted that I that I know things. <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, that uh, that all was uh, cool. Uh, what what happens after this? The uh, oh, we see Ezra. Uh, we <laughs> little radio uh, radio to the uh officer there's a there's an officer calling to LS 757 uh, that their reinforcements are being dispatched to his position and Ezra <laughs> takes up the uh the comm and I got the only way I can describe it is he kind of sounded like a trucker like he almost changed his voice to to sound that way like uh but it's also a classic Ezra kind of move he did so, that all the time 757, uh, confirm just, that. Uh, he would just grab a comm when knocked, kill, or either a dead trooper or knocked out one, and then like, hear the, the comms and kind of, mm-hmm. you know, chime in somehow. Yeah, I thought they did a pretty good job with uh, casting, uh, because obviously this wasn't who played Ezra in, the, in Rebels, yeah. Right. No, but they did, yeah, I think he's, like I, I think he's pretty believable as Ezra, as an older Ezra. Yeah, um, I think so. The blue contacts, I think, helps a lot. But overall, he just kind of got that look. Um, well, but. in he look, he kind of looks like his, like the the Ezra father in the in the animation. It's like oh with yeah, the beard yeah. and everything. Like, oh, I didn't yeah. think about comparing the two of those. Two of those. Yeah, I did see. Yeah, there was a. Uh, someone had brought the images of uh, him, uh, uh, Hera, and Ahsoka. It shows them compared to their parents, and they're all kind of looking more like their parents now. Yeah. Yep. But, uh, yeah, so, he's, yeah, Ezra says thanks for, <laughs> thanks for the heads up, and he just kind of, like, gives them a little punch and drags them away. <laughs> um 
But then back on the fortress, Sabine is telling Ahsoka. Oh, Sabine tells. I think Ahsoka asked where Ezra is, and he's. She says he's going home, and uh, Ahsoka asks her, "Hey, you, you want to get out of here?" Um, and then uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh yeah, she she uh, grabs the helmet before. Uh, oh. Yeah, Sabine says, I'm right behind you, and then grabs her helmet, and they're off. So then Thrawn is uh, telling controls, as he calls, I think he's just referring to the droid as controls. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just how he address, addresses him. Um, to have the main batteries target uh, the fortress for bombardment, and... Uh, yeah, so they uh, they do that. They start firing like crazy at the at the fortress, and I thought for sure, okay, now. But at least the mothers have to be ticked off at this. And they're just like they just sit silently and let this all yeah, happen. Yeah. They're moving out, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, this isn't they're, they're some basically s- like they don't really give crap. This isn't some sacred thing. I mean, I guess they do know. I guess they know that uh, Morgan's dead at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, true. I mean, this whole this whole planet's got so many different statues and monument things all over it. Seems like, but um, so Ahsoka and Sabine, I guess they're not. I guess they're they, they don't mean anything to the to uh, the great mothers. Um, but Ahsoka and Sabine jump off the edge. Uh. Uh, oh, yeah, they, they're they running away from the troopers, just jump off the edge, and just in time, it's like the like magic carpet scene from Aladdin or something, basically. <laughs> Classic. Uh, there's the shuttle right there to pick them up. I guess they just knew, they must have communicated with them to know, <laughs> uh, I hope, or just used the force, force to know somehow. Yeah, maybe. I don't, who knows? Just in time for that fortress to just completely crumble into oblivion. Um, and then they they get hi- Hu Yang to divert all the power to the engines now now and uh, go right go after the the eye of Chimera <laughs> and uh, throw the way back home. <laughs> yeah, Thrawn uh, Thrawn gets on gets on the. Speaker there with Ahsoka and uh, first commends her for her efforts today that she was a uh, valiant uh, opponent, basically. Um, goes on to talk about how he knew her master and this is very all very eerie, like Thrawn talking here and everything like suspenseful and, you know, as Thrawn tends to be. And uh, mm-hmm. and he concluded... Her strategies would be similar to her master's. Um, and then I just put here a qu- couple of quotes from uh, one. One wonders how similar you might become. Perhaps this is where a ronin such as you belongs. And goes on to claim victory that he's won today. And then uh, ends it all on long live the empire. The engines energize and... It does shoot off into hyperspace. Take on. And unlike the first time this thing shot off, uh, n- not no no damage. I mean, there's no. They're right, <laughs> like right there behind it, and and it just kind of like shifts them a bit. <laughs> yeah, it just d- discombobulates the whole thing, their whole ship. Yeah, um, but they're fine. They're just. They're good. They're fine. They're just also screwed. <laughs> but at least they're alive. So then we see the the no T um I go call it temporary village. Uh we see um Ahsoka and Sabine riding the howlers with uh Hu Yang hovering the shuttle once again above them and they uh Basically reacquaint themselves with the note. To, hey, remember us? We're still we're we're back. Uh, oh, hey. And then we hear, and they don't even say, 
uh, in the subtitles here, uh, what, it just says bird squawking. <laughs> <laughs> hear this bird off to the side. And of course we look and we see, this isn't, that is the type of, it is an owl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's the owl that uh, is in Clone Wars that follows her and rebels. His name's Morai. Had a brief cameo in Mando season two, right? Or a more yeah. of an Easter egg, right? It's supposed so I, I don't know if you guys heard, but it's supposed to be believed that it's like the the daughter of the Mortis gods, like spirit watching over her over Ahsoka since basically that daughter gave up her life to save Ahsoka when they were in that uh, Mortis God like series in Wars. Yeah. yeah, and just a brief, just a briefly mention. So that was like a they just basically accidentally stumbled across. Um, was it a? Was it like a? It wasn't a planet, right? It was a. It was like it was a pyramid. Pyramid. In space. That's what I was thinking. I yeah. Yeah. Or a diamond kind of thing. It's a shape. Yeah. It was weird. And that's yeah. So that's where we had the. Uh, the three, the father, and the, were they siblings? The father, daughter, and son. Yeah. Yep. yep. And it was kind of like, she was kind of like good and he was kind of evil. Was that the? Yeah. She was she the was... light side. He is the dark side. Father is the middle. Right. Right. Yeah. And she ends up not making it. She sacrifices her. Well, she gets, I think she gets stabbed first, but then she sacrifices the rest of her life to Ahsoka, so Ahsoka can live. Right. So, uh, so then we see, um, I'm just kind of jumping between, uh, areas here because we see she and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. She's still alive. <laughs> yeah. I totally uh, forgot about the two of them. Yep. Same. Mm -hmm. We see her hold up her lightsaber from a distance so that the nomads can see she's, uh, I guess ready to join them. And then Balin um, is sitting there. Or sitting there. He's, <laughs> he's standing there looking out uh, into the, the beautiful scenery on the hand of this, as you mentioned, the Mortis gods. Uh, these rocks, giant rock sculptures, um, which I immediately recognize. I had to look up the name. I wasn't going to remember Mortis, but... Uh, yeah, we do see to his to the statue's left is the the dude that survived the dark side dude, and on the right we see there is dark a <laughs> there is a col presumably collapsed missing uh, statue or sculpture of of the lady the the light side lady <laughs> the daughter the daughter yep uh. All look pretty cool though. That's pretty neat. So he's just kind of like looking off into the, into the distance, which, I guess this is was more part of. Balin's uh. Uh, goal is, whatever. Oh, yeah. Whatever he was after, but I'm sure. I mean, it makes perfect sense. As Mike mentioned, the father was the was sort of the neutral, uh, in between. Kind of makes sense, orange lightsaber Balin, that he would be in the middle. He'd be more in the middle, um, and uh, yeah. Um, did you notice the the like the like the light blinking from the far on the mountaintop that he's looking out to? It's like yeah, a I missed that. It was like a little certain like light that just flashed kind of on and off, which is like what? So something's out there. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's where Balin's going. Now, how they do that? Because of Ray Stevenson being gone? They so, so recast him or do it in animation? I don't know if there's any official officialness to this. Probably not. But I saw someone had put, um, oh, shoot. Is it... Um, uh, Liv Schreiber. L Leo, yeah, yeah Leo I saw that one. Schreiber. I also Schreiber. saw Gerard Butler, which Gerard Butler and Ray Stevenson can could look pretty close together, I think. 
Hopefully they'll pick someone that looks halfway similar. Yeah. Right. Right. But, I mean, uh, they're not, they're going to do their homework. Try to figure it out. I I, I got to believe right. that. Yep. So then, oh, out there in space, we see that the eye of <laughs> the eye of Chimera Chimera uh, is approaching. As you mentioned, Dathomir, which looks like uh, yeah, I mean I. I remember very little about what the planet looked like in the animated series, but yeah, very red planet. Yeah, it was red in the, in the animated series too. Which I gotta say, I'm still I'm still a bit confused about why the whatever the Darth Maul race is, is from here um, and how it's like all the women are the witches and all the men are like the Darth Maul I, well, I assumed it, especially after this episode where we know, or with this series where we know that the Night Sisters came from the other galaxy to the main galaxy. Um, maybe there's some of the Darth Maul guys um, on that planet, and then the Night Sisters showed up and said, "Nah, we're the, we're in charge now," and I don't know, killed yeah. off all the, the females or some. Something I mean, those or the kids yeah, the other planet. They're dominant. It, but against those other guys, the, the Darth Maul species. Like, yeah, Zab Zabrik. Uh, not Zabrik, to be confused yeah. with, there is, I believe, a a separate like horned race um, that has oh, uh, women that look like that. Um, Star Wars horned races <laughs> species. I guess. You're gonna be reading a long time for that one. <laughs> Dev- uh, Devaronian. De- Devaronians, yeah. He's he showed up in oh, the wait. cantina. Oh no no no, that's different. Uh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. There's uh, yeah. I know there was a different one. How about this one? Yes, El El Elemen, uh, Elemen. Hmm. Um yeah, those look like that. Looks like what I was thinking of. But uh, anywho, I like this line here. Uh. That talks about Darth Maul. It says he kills Jedi Master Qui Gon Jin during the Battle of Naboo before being bisected by Qui Gon's apprentice Obi Wan. Nice. <laughs> um. Yeah. So let's see. We had uh, the shuttle. Uh, shuttle. Oh, separate shuttle. Which one was it? A. Mm, it was Balin's shuttle. Balin's no. shuttle. Okay. Yeah. It arrives uh, to uh, to greet Hera and that Hawkins fellow that was uh, we briefly met earlier, and uh, yeah, of course they're very very cautious when a night trooper uh, appears out of it, and it's. Chopper of all that, uh, of all of them that goes up to investigate, kind of puts his hand down on Chopper, and uh, Chopper can tell he's 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 feeling this something's not right here, something's a little off. Not I, trusting this guy. It, I feel I feel like maybe he's like Chopper's reading is like through the armor somehow because you know he yeah. can scan right. Sure, he might know like <laughs> going through a scan that oh that's not. Any just normal good old night trooper, it's Ezra the trooper. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, once he takes his helmet off, of course, we see we get a very heartfelt moment with him and Hera. Um, because again, I mean, she was, I mean, basically kind of a mom figure to him, I think, in uh, in Rebel, so yeah, yeah. But we don't get to actually see. He, he starts walking toward her, and then we don't get. That's it. <laughs> that's the last we see of them. For we're gonna have to wait. Just gonna have to wait now. So then, back on the at the Noti village, Sabine uh, she sees that Ahsoka is off, and uh, kind of looking off into the sky, and walks over to her, and she uh, Ahsoka tells Sabine that she did well, so she's holding up to her. To her promise of, uh, you know, just kind of always, always having her back, and uh, talk about how Thrawn got away, but uh, thanks to her, or uh, 
Ahsoka says thanks to her, she's Ezra Ezra got home. Um and then Sabine says, I hope, but Ahsoka Ahsoka knows. She knows he made it. She can Yes. Um and then goes on to say Ezra's where he needs to be, and so are they. So it's time to move on. Um but before they walk back over to the no tea, uh Sabine Sabine says she, she I feel like mm, nothing. Just shadows in the starlight. And then scene ends of course, with the force ghost of Anakin looking on um, with a uh, very different, uh, not playing, not immediately playing the traditional outro music, uh, but more of a hopeful sort of melody. And uh, it does eventually fade back into the classic uh, cool uh, outro music that the Ahsoka show has brought to us. So, end scene. Oh, miniseries over. Yeah. See you in the movie. <laughs> yeah. So, as is tradition, we do like to do a little uh, five-star rating system here. But before we do that, <laughs> putting you on the spot here, Tyler. <laughs> oh, boy. What would you give this one out of five stars? This particular episode. Oh, uh, Shane, you're cheating. It's supposed to be your. You're supposed to choose. Not first when we have a guest be. on. <laughs> <laughs> I looked back. We let the guest go first. <laughs> Shane oh, likes when other people go first because then he can figure out what he wants to actually rate based on. Okay, so I mean, I I enjoyed this episode. I think I still liked the I don't know, the world between worlds episode. I thought was more fun. So. Um, sure. Uh, I'll I'll say because what we're doing four, what a can I go point fives or yes you can go whatever? point whatever you want. <laughs> okay, uh, shoot. I mean this is very important. I need to make sure and have a very accurate uh, re- representation. Uh, four point two. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Well, now it's my turn. Uh, let's see. I think I'd go a little higher because there was, I mean, there's a lot here, but I got to go with, um, I think I'm going to keep it a, an, yeah, four, five is what I'm going with for this one. There's a lot. It was good. It was like, you know, yeah, just a lot. There's a lot happening. <laughs> a lot and it, happens and, but there's a lot of stuff where it's like, I don't know, like we're still in this show. What has Thrawn done? to really sell us on the promise of Thrawn. Like he, Oh, I'll send out tie fighters and Oh, they failed. Uh, prepare for a ground assault, and you know, we'll, but we're going to keep our ship here. There's never like a twist that really happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. So there's, I feel, you know, I kept thinking of, uh, uh Balin was going to show up at the last second or, uh, yeah. What, you know, I don't know. So I think, I think the, you know, I think the biggest, yeah, fair enough. I think the biggest twist was was that they didn't get away. <laughs> like that, not everyone actually left. With I was surprised that they didn't get away, and they were they're now stranded in the other galaxy. Uh, right. I, was ex- I was expecting everyone to get on the star destroyer, and then something happens at the other side of the galaxy, mm-hmm. where then they split up. Right. Yep. All right, Mike. What do you think? Uh, I I give it like a four scene. Oh, interesting. It's not my most not as impressed you. We're, we're not that far no. far apart here overall. I mean it's still I mean, it has, like if it was a bad had, episode, it'd be like a you know, under a three yeah. for me. So we had cool aspects, but yeah, like World Between Worlds was like one of the best, I think. Yeah, for sure. And the last few episodes actually have been This is actually up there. the the least rated we've had of an episode. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. I think it's because it has too many cliffhangers, and it's like, uh. uh like, at least yeah. resolve one. I mean, I mean, I guess they did. They resolved Ezra going home. That was, like, the whole promise when Ahsoka left. It, so, what, 
one way or another, whether it's another show or it's the movie, this absolutely was a was a setup for what's to come. This all, all these last few scenes of this episode. Well, technically, isn't like Mandalorian season four could be coming out or being made? Oh man, uh, I feel like we just got done with three. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think yeah. I, I I've heard that there's gonna be another one. That's gonna happen. I don't know before. if that's, I don't. Yeah, I I feel like it's everything's gonna. Yeah, that show is gonna happen before a movie comes. Right. Yeah, I don't think we're getting a book of Boba Fett season two. I think if we mm, if we see yeah. Boba again, it's going to be in the movie. If we see Boba again, it's going to be at an, at a bubble tea place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, we this is yeah probably the longest episode we've done. Thanks, <laughs> thanks so much for uh, hanging out with us and staying up late though, Tyler. This is awesome. Oh no, it's it's not even late here. So it kind oh of okay. Works. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm, yes. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. So uh, thanks again. This is awesome. Uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Mike and Tyler and Herschel. And thanks. I noticed you stopped in here too, as well. Rhythm. Appreciate you guys. Uh, hey, if you want to reach us, you can do so at disnerdsplus at gmail dot com or go to disnerdsplus dot com. Uh, yeah. So tonight was a Wednesday. I don't know if we'll be going back to that or Thursdays. We'll see. We usually record eight thirty though, one way or another. Over here at Twitch.tv. Well, Loki's on Thursday. Sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah, unless we wait till the next week. Yeah, I suppose. Good point. Good point. We'll say Thursdays. <laughs> you can find, uh, yeah, Twitch.tv slash Shave Maddox is where you can do that. You can find, oh, actually, Tyler, where can people find you before we let you go? Uh, if you want to check out more of the stuff I do, uh, I've got me and my buddy with a podcast called The Discographers. It's at discogpod.com. And uh, he's a former music teacher. I tell this, we pick a band and through the course of our episodes, we tell the story and uh, I tell the story of the band. My buddy tells, breaks down the music and what, about what makes it interesting. And we talk about the albums and it's uh, really fun. It, the two of us get to hang out and talk about the stuff we like to do. Awesome. Very cool. Go check that out. You can find Mike as well at cool as a cucumber and you can find me at shave mad ox and that will about do it for this evening thanks so much for listening and thanks again tyler for joining us for this final episode of ahsoka and until next time may the force be with you Can I uh, throw out a, a theory that I had, and not in this episode, but in the last one with yeah. uh, Balin? Sure. Uh, so I think uh, I got the feeling uh, that Balin was, especially in that second to last episode, was his thing is he is looking at the future. He's using the Force to try to see the future, and that's what his whole thing it was in that episode. Was mm. he when he's like, oh. Oh yeah, Shin, your path, uh, you have a different path than mine. And then goes off, you know, lets her do her thing, calls Thrawn, and then he goes and just waits where he, where the force tells him that, uh, he should be for, to meet Ahsoka. Yeah. And so I, I, I think I might need to like rewatch all the rest of the series and kind of have that perspective and see if that theory plays out. But I think that's like his thing, like Ezra, Ezra Bridger is like, a, he has connections to animals. Um, you know, different people have different things sometimes. And I think that the future might be his thing. Yeah. That's Makes interesting. Sense. Yeah. Whoops. I can see that. I mean, I'm, I'm totally with you on the, like, he's just kind of like feeling out the force. Like he's wherever the force is kind of telling him he needs to be that totally. I could totally see that. He's yeah. feeling the force. I wish we got got some more of like what his deal is, like what his goal is, and like, yeah, you know, is it to try to get to the world between worlds, or I mean, he shows up there with the father statue. Is like, you know, what it, what is, what is his, why is he doing all this? Kind of yeah, feels like his goals. So we don't know, like, 
As far as we're aware, those other th- other two, I guess, are still alive. Like, I almost feel like he wants to be the new father or something, or whatever. Uh, maybe. Like, maybe he's dying and he needs to replace him. Of course, they haven't had a they've been missing the other one for a while. Maybe it's going to, maybe he's going to take the place of, of the daughter or something. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if because of the connection with the owl, that Ahsoka, that's the end game for Ahsoka is to become yeah. the new daughter or something. Well, especially if she, yeah, she took the, her life force or whatever. Essence. That would yeah. make sense. Yeah. Good point. Would. And then that way Filoni doesn't, doesn't have to kill her. Right. Yeah. yeah, I don't think he wants to kill him. <laughs> no, no. It just seems like he doesn't want to do that. Sorry. It's like what cool. his baby character. <laughs> cool stuff, though. Um, right? Yeah. Now we got to wait till what's next Star Wars. I think it's, is it Acolyte? Or is it Skeleton Crew? I don't know which one it is. I Close can't remember two. which of the two. Yeah. But Loki's tomorrow, so that's going to be exciting. I can't wait for yeah, that. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, right on. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I'm going to call it a night. It's almost my bedtime. so. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go see if there's any pizza left from, from dinner. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Family got it without me. All right. Cool. All right, well, hopefully they left some for you. <laughs> Right. Thanks, thanks again, especially for the last minute yeah. uh, joining us. Oh, yeah. Was no, it was just yeah, Star Wars you. came up. I was like, oh, so, uh, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> nice. That was awesome. <laughs> Great. I'll, I'll have to keep you in mind for the future for sure. But Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I always have a, a Star Wars opinions and thoughts. Sweet. Nice. All right. All right. Well, All right have a good y'all day. have a great night. Thanks so much. See ya. Have All a right. great night. All right. Uh, let's uh, Let's... Yeah. Oh, Mike's just going to like hang out frozen here. All right, cool. <laughs> well, I suppose. Uh, thanks again, Herschel and Rhythm. You guys have a great night. Maybe I'll see you in a little while. We'll see. But, uh, yep, that'll do it for this evening. How this goes. I guess I could take it back to the uh... <laughs> still Mike's frozen face here. Hi, Mike. Bye. We'll, we'll, we'll see you later. Uh, see ya. <laughs>